Hello, and welcome to The Franchise Life. I am your host, Stacey Shannon. Today, we are covering a concept that is unlike any other concept that I've presented to you before, and it is called Little Kitchen Academy. And joining us is Joel Lazarvitz, who is in Franchise Development for Little Kitchen Academy. Welcome, Joel. Thanks, Thanks so, so much, much for having me, Stacey. Yeah, my pleasure. So Little Kitchen Academy, uh, you know, just at a very high level, it's a Montessori-inspired cooking academy. So before we dive into what Little Kitchen Academy is at a broader level, can you just share a little bit about, little bit uh, about yourself and the founders of LKA? Sure. So I've been in franchising myself for over 25 years um, with a good portion of that time dedicated to children's edutainment brands, as I like to call it. So brands that both <laughs> educate and entertain kids simultaneously. And I've been working with, you know, LKA, as I call it, Little Kitchen Academy for the past three years. And then our founders, um, Brian and Felicity Curran, Brian is American and Felicity is Canadian. Um, they, uh, Brian has a serial entrepreneur. He's been involved in franchising with some leading brands like Cold Stone Creamery, um, No Southwest Grill, Flip Flop Shops. And then Felicity has a really strong culinary operations and Montessori background. So together, they just make the perfect, perfect team. And they uh, launched Little Kitchen Academy, you know, in Vir in, um, in Vancouver between three to four years ago. And, uh, and we've been franchising pretty much ever since. Awesome. So I introduced this and we can see your backdrop here uh, is a Little Kitchen Academy, what the build out would look like. But you can you dive in a little bit deeper into what this franchise opportunity is really about? Sure, absolutely. And I'll share with you that for us, you know, a Little Kitchen Academy is so much more than just a culinary academy for kids. I think at first blush or glance, people look at it and they go, oh, wow, it's a culinary academy for kids. But really what we're doing is we're changing lives from scratch, as we like to say. So for us, it's a Montessori inspired culinary academy that allows children to build independence or confidence really their own creativity by participating in, you know, in, in culinary programs, obviously, but by learning practical life skills, you know? So for us, you know, when Little Kitchen Academy started, the goal was to have a 1500 square foot venue um, where, you know, you'd have the Montessori inspired approach to teaching. However, what we've learned through franchising is really what we're seeking is, I'd say mission-based purpose-driven people that absolutely want to make a difference in children's lives. The culinary platform just happens to be the vehicle to do that. But the truth of the matter is, is what we're really trying to do is treat, you know, teach independence in kids with a Montessori inspired approach to teaching. So, you know, when someone comes and participates in LKA, typically it's going to be, you know, a three hour program. Oftentimes it can be a, a four week session where the kids will come from, let's say nine to 12 uh, with age appropriate programming and age specific groups. So it could be the three to five year olds, it could be the six to eight year olds, it could be the nine to 12 year olds. But what it, what it culminates in is, you know, a child participating in a program, and then oftentimes running home saying, okay, mom, dad, uh, you know, I'm going to cook today where their you know, parents kind of give them this quizzical look when they're at the age of six, that they actually want to make a meal. Um, or they go home and they say, you know what, I'm going to do the dishes today. And they gives, it gives, you know, you get the same reaction. But the truth of the matter is, this is their environment. So what you see behind me, you know, are 10 stations. You see the chop value table, which is made out of, you know, 33,000 recycled chopsticks, which promotes sustainability. You know, you look in the very back behind me, you see an arrow garden wall where the kids can make their own herbs and vegetables. Everything has a purpose behind Little Kitchen Academy. So it's so much more than a culinary school for kids and the children that participate in it just want to keep coming back over and over and over again because it's their environment and they just love it. No, it's, you know, what really appealed to me, Joel, about this concept when I first learned about it in the past month or so is, 
you know, I have a lot of individuals that come to me and they're interested in child education and development. And this is really, you know, that niche where this would fall because you are focused on developing kids. And, but as far as, you know, culinary skills and learning about sustainability and exposing them, I mean, the herb wall I thought was just so amazing and innovative where they can go and pick their own herbs for you know a specific meal um it it just it 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 is truly a brand that is for somebody looking to make a difference in kids lives and a lasting impression and difference so uh just to dive in a little bit uh so the company started franchising in 2019 you currently have 15 franchise partners that represent 180 locations throughout the United States. And with about, I believe you mentioned 15 of those locations are currently up and running and the rest will be in development. That's exactly it. You know, my goal when I started with with LKA was to find, and, and maybe this is a bit atypical when it comes to franchising, was to look to people who are either already involved in children's education franchising or to find people that just, they really, really could attach themselves to our purpose. So what I ended up doing was looking for multi-unit operators or area developers that were either already teaching a practical life skill or just who just attach themselves to our mission. So we've had the good fortune of, you know, finding people that have bought the rights to Colorado where they're gonna open 20 units across the state someone who bought the rights to all of greater Chicago, who's opening 24 units across across greater Chicago. We've had people who bought three in Wisconsin, four in in greater Detroit. So it wasn't, um, it wasn't a fluke. (laughs) These are really the people that we, we were looking for who, you know, we wanted to find kind people. And that seems maybe at the, at the surface to be so trivial, but the truth of the matter is, is we wanted to have real relationships with the partners that we were taking on. And when you have 400 units with 400 different operators, quite frankly, after my 25 years in the industry, it's very hard to have real relationships when you have 400 different franchisees. So our approach was to really focus on finding people that loved LKA, loved our mission, and could open multiple units across a particular state, a particular region, and in some cases, maybe even in, in different states. So uh, that purpose led me to find those types of people. And so when we say 15 franchise partners that that represent 188 locations, that may seem like a lot. And obviously it's a development schedule so that they're going to honor and respect as, as they continue to grow. We've, you know, we now have one open in Denver. We have two that are opening in Chicago. We have a partner in Ontario who was, you know, one of the, was the first international franchisee for another children's education franchise and she just opened her first now we have five or six in Ontario that are open so it's it's really allowed me to focus on I think the type of people that don't just fall in love with the brand understand that it's a business and want to attach themselves to our you know to our opportunity and grow with us as well yeah so that raises a good question you mentioned one of your partners uh already has is in the child and education space with a different brand. What do the other backgrounds look like from your partners? You know, it's it's eclectic. You know, I would tell you that everyone loves the brand. I never run into anyone who comes to us and says, oh, you want to make a difference in children's lives and you want to educate kids and entertain them with a Montessori style approach to teaching and have them go home with a perpetual smile. Oh, that's not for me. <laughs> right. I never I never hear that. Uh, you know, however, we're getting people that are sales and marketing driven uh, people that want to make a difference in their community. A lot of it is mission based. So you get sales and marketing, you get HR backgrounds, you get people that are educationally based. Maybe they're teaching and looking and they're tired of the grind, but still want to stay in the classroom type of setting um, as well. So we're getting a wide range of people, but I would say sales and marketing driven education backgrounds. That's some things we see pretty consistently. Very interesting. So I know you said you've been very purposeful for looking for multi-unit owners or area developers. Uh, 
Does that prevent somebody that is wanting to open a single location to begin with from this opportunity? Or are you receptive if they're the right partner as well? It's, it's funny. If you asked me that question two years ago, I might have a different answer. Today, we absolutely are open-minded to individuals. One of the things I think we've learned over the past two years is that even though you go in with particular markets that you think you're going to open and where you know children would thrive and they just make perfect sense based on household income and you know and parents signing their children up for a variety of different kids based programs what it all comes down to is the individual because kids are kids whether you open a franchise in Des Moines Iowa or you open a franchise in Orange County California they're still going to have the same smiles at the end of the day, and they're still going to love the program. So for us, what's really happened is that, you know, it comes down to the person. If we think the person is just the perfect fit for LKA and they check all of our boxes, we're happy to offer single units. And we just want as many children as possible to participate in the programs. Awesome. All right. Let's talk about another very attractive attribute of this business model, and that is the brand partners, which I think is just fantastic. And not that you don't already have the credibility, but the partners that you have acquired and have drawn to this brand are pretty impressive. So that being Birkenstock, and ChefWorks, to name a couple. So can you talk about how that relationship started and what their involvement in Little Kitchen Academy is? Sure. So um, David Kahn, who's the CEO of Birkenstock, is um, now friendly with you know our co-founders, Brian and Felicity Curran. He fell in love with the brand. Uh, if anyone knows anything about Birkenstock is that you know they're very particular about who they work with, you know, and they have a long standing, fantastic track record, you know, in, in, in obviously in the, let's call it the, you know, the shoe space, you know, for lack of a lack of a better term, you know, they gift the Birkenstock wall to our franchisees where, where our kids can actually hang their chef coats and use the Birkenstock shoes. Uh, David Kahn is one of our greatest ambassadors. He just loves everything there is about LKA and we love him back, <laughs> you know, because of that. So we have the Birkenstock walls, we have the Birkenstock shoes. He's a huge ambassador to our brand. And then Chef Works, you know, you see the, if you go through our YouTube channel or go onto our website, littlekitchenacademy.com, you're going to see, you know, the, the chef coats that the kids where where they beam with pride and their chest comes out and when they walk into our environment it's like this is my environment you know this is where i'm going to learn i don't have to look over my right shoulder or my left shoulder to you know see whether mommy or daddy are approving what i'm doing this is where i'm going to gain my independence and my self-confidence so with chef works it's um they're our partner in terms of our our chef coats and the kids absolutely love them they love their coats definitely that's pretty cool. I will have to show a, a picture uh, when we post this of the wall, because you had shared one where you see the coats hanging and the little Birkenstocks and so forth. So I think that's pretty incredible. And you also mentioned Thank that you. Chef Works, um, you also have a relationship as far as the knives and uh, the you. I guess the utensils you use as well. So can you talk just briefly about that? So we have a, what we call almost like a, let's call it a progressive knife set, right? Because the reality is that one of the things I always hear, oh, you know, kids are going to cut themselves and what's going to happen? We haven't, listen, we haven't had any incidents. Their incidents are rare because of the fact that we have a progressive knife set because we're not handing a three-year-old, <laughs> you know, this very sharp knife or God knows what they're going to do with it, right? It, it, they have to get to certain stages where they can graduate, so to speak. And some of them may never get to the last stage because safety is, is, is for us, is of the utmost importance. So having that progressive knife set where they start at a level and then they can graduate to different ones, number one, it gives them goals, obviously and then number two it allows them as they're learning to not just learn but see you know the importance of knife skills and you know when i get to a certain level i can get that next knife so for us that's really really important because it's it's 
say part of our curriculum, but in a lot of ways it is. It's helping them understand, you know, that for me to reach a certain level, I have to, you know, be able to be safe and within this environment, make sure I'm taking care of myself and others. And when I'm at my station, I'm using this progressive, you know, I set different skills. Once I reach certain skill sets, then I'll continue to grow with Little Kitchen Academy as well. Oh, that's awesome. So let's talk a little bit about uh, your client acquisition, clients being the parents that are wanting to enroll their children. What what are the different, I guess, who are you targeting and what types we can see uh, via your background? Certainly this is in studio. You have the kitchens, you know, the ovens, and you have the table where they can enjoy, I would guess, the end product of what they made. So share a little bit about, you know, the different types of, I guess, events or classes that a franchisee can host and where you do really target getting those uh, clients. So, you know, I would say it's a, it's a variety of ways. A lot of it's through school partnerships. And what that means is speaking to you know, principals, head of PTAs, parents, committees, really showing them the educational value that LKA has to offer. That's critically important because obviously if you're offering programs during the day, you have to have this, you know, the school has to be rallying behind you to see the value of LKA. So it's approaching these various decision makers, almost positioning in a, as an out-of-school field trip where you're going to have 10 kids that are going to come uh, and participate. And typically in those cases, because we separate them from 9 to 12, 1230 to 330 and 4 to 7, you have these three windows where those school groups can actually come. So we're building relationships with these school decision makers, and then they're coming in with a, with a group of 10 that are going to come for four weeks in a row. As I mentioned earlier, three to five, six to eight, nine to 12, that's really what we focus on because placing a three-year-old with a 12-year-old from a learning aptitude standpoint, it just doesn't make any sense. So we're making sure that we're approaching these school decision makers and we're showing them the value that LKA has. I don't want to diminish the home economics class or they we're so far above that that you know they're sending kids to an aquarium they're sending kids to uh, you know the theater they're sending kids to other venues why not have them participate in LKA where they can actually learn build the self-confidence and self-esteem so one of the approaches is always talking through decision makers in school in school groups we're constantly on you know Instagram we're sharing we're sharing links we're sharing information about our you know about our brand and then, of course, we also have summer camps. That's arguably probably the most popular area of business because parents are like, well, what am I going to do for my kids for a week, right? So if they come five days in a row from, let's say, 9 to 12 or 1230 to 330 or 4 to 7, we'll have week-long summer camps. Like I think we have a waiting list at our head office, you know, in, in the Washington, the first academy opened at Point Grey, 200 kids. Even in Century City, we reopened the first one in the United States, also a huge waiting list. So oh. summer camps are wild, wildly popular. Um, they just, it's, it's just a great venue for the kids to be able to learn and, and, and enjoy. And then we also do teens nights. Teens nights is something where on Friday nights and Saturday nights, we'll go four Fridays or four Saturdays in a row. We'll, we'll have teenagers that will participate. Then they'll go to you know sit at the chop value table that you see behind me to enjoy the fruits of their labor and actually, you know, enjoy the meal that they're making. And at that age, I have two of those, 16 and an 18 year old. So I know I know it well. What they'll end up doing is they'll share on their favorite social media platforms everything that they've done. So this day and age, it's Snapchat and Instagram where they're sharing everything. And so the teenagers that sign up will come typically from, let's say, 7.30 to 10 is typical, four Fridays in a row or four Saturdays in a row. So it really depends, getting back to your question, on who we're targeting. If it's, you know, that those younger ages, we're building the school partnerships, we're doing programs through mom groups, where, you know, there's drop-in classes where, you know, children can participate. And if you're focusing on, you know, the summer camps, it's obviously focusing on the moms and the dads and making sure that they understand that LKA is available. And there's also a crossover effect. If, if a child participates in, let's call it a, a regular program during the week, you're almost guaranteed because of how much they love it that they're going to sign up for a summer camp, 
you know, as well. So there's that spillover effect without question. How cool. It's just such a feel good brand. I love it. It's so, uh, you know, one thing uh, when we spoke previously, you also mentioned that there are classes that per se could be Spanish speaking that, I mean, you want to, uh, you know, make sure that you're catering to all groups. And in those types, uh, you're doing Spanish dish inspired dishes and so forth which I think is really, really neat as well. I'll tell you what's interesting about that. You can imagine we have a lot of recipes. You know, our our, our curriculum, our, you know, we don't cook with meat uh, because of cross-contamination, because of allergies, because of a whole variety of reasons. Plus, it doesn't hurt if you're not cooking with protein. You bring your food costs down significantly, uh, obviously. We don't promote the country of origin of where we're cooking food from, they only find out when they show up. And the reason for that is because this is not about them wanting to enjoy Italian food more or them wanting to make paella, you know, because they're originally from Spain or they, you know, it's more about the overall experience and the self-confidence and what it instills in a child when they participate. So some of them will come and they'll say, Oh, spinach. I'm on the spinach. <laughs> and then, you know, you, we can always have a substitute, but they amaze themselves. They make spaghetti squash. And it's like, well, this is not real spaghetti, <laughs> but they, they're always surprised themselves. So most children, we would never force a child to make something they don't want, but because it's their own environment, they make food and they're amazed that they like it because they've gone in no, no. I think they're putting their preconceived notions aside of what they really think because it is their own environment and they realize it's one that's very welcoming where they have a chance to really make as much, you know, make food from different corners of the world, so to speak. But they're making like so maybe this week it's Indian week and maybe next week it's about it's Italian food. And maybe next week it's, it's Spanish. But the purpose behind it is for them to learn the practical life skill because, there's so many kids right now that become teenagers and they're 18. And they're like, so how do I boil water? <laughs> you know, and, and it's, and it's, it, it, it's, it's, I laugh about it, but the kids that participate in LKA, they'll never be asking that question ever, yeah. you know? And so it's more about the experience than it is what they're actually making, frankly. Yeah. I wish this would have been around when my kids were younger. Uh, we're, we've, uh, they're 28 and almost 30 now. So we've, uh, we far surpassed Hi. that. <laughs> but I, ironically, <laughs> I was just talking to a friend this week and about taking a cooking class. And I mean, just to, you know, learn different skills and so forth. So I, I just, again, love this, this uh, idea. You know, one thing you mentioned um, about targeting the schools that I was reminded of is you also have a give back uh, program for schools that do um, partner with you per se and help promote Little Kitchen Academy. So what does that look like for a franchise owner? So the way it works typically is we have what we call our how, how, how Can I Help program. And typically we align ourselves with three different charities. Um, a percentage of the proceeds will go back to um, that charity and the child gets to decide which charity they choose. So for us, you know, we have different charities. All of them have different meanings and purpose, you know, to us. The same way they have different meanings and purpose to the child. Usually so a child will just attach themselves to one of them. And the fact that they they can give a percentage of the proceeds back, you know, and have the child you know, choose which one is really, really powerful and impactful. Um, and that just, again, it's just, it's aligned with our purpose and our mission and who we are and what we're all about. So for us, that was really important to, to build relationships with companies that we want to align ourselves or charities that we want to align ourselves with, because it just, it's aligned with our mission. And so having the children make that decision is, uh, is pretty cool as well. Uh, as well. Yeah, of course. All right, so let's talk about the investment level. So your investment range mm -hmm. is between 367 and 627. And certainly, you know, when we look at a brick and mortar investment, um, that 
variable in there is the build out and the space right. is it a new generation space is it second generation there's a lot of that goes into that so um what does the footprint so certainly i would think that you want um you know prime real estate street front visibility from a marketing standpoint um what does the footprint of the space look like so yes and no. And, and so let me explain it. We're looking for 1,500 square feet. What's critically important for us, I'll give you just an anecdote, a great story. So when we started in the U.S., our first corporate location that we opened was in Century City. Now, if anyone ever has ever been to Century City, it's not a secret. It's a tourist trap, right? You go in there. It's just fantastic. You walk around. You can walk around for hours, you know, because it's just it's gorgeous, right? Does that mean we would go out and suggest to our franchise partners that they should go and open in Century City? Not necessarily. You know, we did that pur purpose purposefully because we know how beautiful Century City is and we knew how many eyeballs and brand impressions we would get in, in, in Century City. When we counsel our franchise partners, it's different because, you know, if you opened across from Century City, could you have just amount of success in a strip mall. I guess you can argue yes and no, depending on what side of the fence you're on. But the truth of the matter for us is that we want a 1500 square foot location that's close to private schools, that may be close to a pediatric doctor and dental office. It may be close to some other children's based concepts that will remain nameless <laughs> that are part of, uh, you know, you know, let's say in tutoring or things along those lines. Why? Because the reason they're there is, is because you're close to potential customers. The disposable income is there as well. And their areas, their parents are comfortable bringing their kids. So you could potentially be in a strip mall, to your point, that has, you know, really great space, great foot traffic, you know, but, you know, you do you want to be in a, the most expensive mall on, I don't know, the third floor? Not necessarily, you know, because then you're paying a ridiculous amount in square footage and whereas parents would be just as comfortable bringing their kids to an area that's safe as just same way schools would, that has good parking, that has visibility, and that would be a great spot for a little kitchen academy. So what really makes the difference in that range, because our franchise fee is 59500 and for people that buy three locations, it's fifty nine five for the first and 50,000 for the second, 50,000 for the third, if they sign for all three, that's not mandating you to open three simultaneously. We realize there's going to be a steep learning curve for you to leave. So there's a development schedule that goes along with that. And typically it's six months to secure a location, nine months to open. That's typical where we see that number going down, which is, which is great because of our real estate partners that we have. Um, but I would say that the build out the reason you see a discrepancy from 360, you know, no, all the way to the 600s is, well, Century City was that 620 odd that you mentioned because, well, it's Century City, right? You know, so would you fall less expensive than that? More often than not, yes, you know, but it's a question of your build out. You know, is it just a standard build out? Are there things you need to change within the venue, leasehold improvements? There's a variety of factors that go in there with the first and, and foremost being, where are you locating? What state? you know, restrictions might there be. So so there's a lot that goes into brick and mortars when you're building them out. And of course, it's going to change from state to state. All right. So Joel, any last notes? Um, anything else that you feel is pertinent for somebody to know that is considering a Little Kitchen Academy as a potential investment? I would share, one of the things we haven't talked about is just our team, you know, I have 25 plus years in introducing brands that both educate and entertain kids. You know, Brian has years of experience in the franchising space where he's been, you know, really successful. You have people and part of our team that have really have a good, strong knowledge of franchising and a good, strong knowledge of um, supporting our partners. You know, I would put our systems, our tools, our our manuals up against anyone in the industry. And the reason I say that is because you would, we've had partners 
that will remain nameless that are part of other much larger organizations that have been around for 10, 15, 20 years that take a look at our systems, take a look at our tools, and we'll say, wow, uh, you know, I'm with another system that's been around for umpteen years, and you have all this in three years. And you have more in three years than I've gotten in 15, 20 years, you know, for some of the, so I think having that background and understanding what it truly means to support a franchise partner is important. I'll also share that Brian Felicity have been master franchisees, franchisees, suppliers, vendors, like they've sat in all the different chairs in franchising. That really helps when you're building a real relationship. So when I say 15 partners that represent 188 locations, you know, some people probably look at me cross-eyed and say, how many that's what we're getting. We're getting people that want to open the 24 or four or 20 or three or one, you know, what it comes down to is the relationship. And it's a relationship that we take exceptionally seriously. We don't just take people, we turn people away if we don't feel it's the right fit because we want real relationships. We want people that they can just pick up the phone and call us and say, Hey, Joel, these are my thoughts. And they don't have to worry about whether they're going to get in contact us with us or not. So I would just share, it is a beautiful brand. You know, the reason I, what I thought about it three years ago when I found it in a press release from a newsletter in Dubai, which sounds so obscure, oh. um, is the same reason I'm excited three years later to bring on the right people. And so anyone who's really attaches themselves to our purpose and our brand, I'm easily reachable. I'd love to talk to them and um, and I'd love to share the story of LKA to see if they're a good fit. But yeah, no, I I just, I love everything that we do and who we are and I'm just excited to see who the next, next people will be to join our family. Absolutely. Well, your passion really shines through and, you know, for individuals that are considering investment and in franchise opportunities, that background, the depth that you just experienced is so critical when evaluating because that really does come into play as strengths. But again, it's, you know, you also keep going back to the mission, you know, the, the brand, the purpose, and those are very, very powerful. And, you know, I do tell my clients also, and I have had a couple of clients get turned away from a brand. And I'm like, at the end of the day, this is a partnership. As much as you choose the brand, mm -hmm. the brand chooses you as well. And just on a last note, um, all that depth and experience that you described also, I think is just certainly, again, uh, oh reinforced God. by the Birkenstock and the ChefWorks uh, brand partnerships, because I'm sure you were vetted extremely highly or well, you know, by <laughs> those brands before those relationships were established. So Joel, thank you so much for joining me today. I look forward to helping you grow this brand. Uh, for anybody that is interested in learning more about Little Kitchen Academy, please feel free to reach out to me at stacy at fusionfranchising.com. Thanks and have a great day.